video editing and obviously we've um we've uh, gone over um this question um on and offline um over the years about what constitutes um something that you need obviously way back in the dim dark past of the uh you know the mid 90s early 2000s around there um it was get as much um beefed up specs as you can um that you can afford like it there was like no I don't think there was much nuance around that. It's like get as much as you can um, because that will help you out. But today it's a, little, a lot more difficult to um, sort of differentiate and I think it comes back down to the original question that um, I said at the beginning of the video which is what are you doing? Um, because the devices have gotten to a point that they're so good um, that you can edit 8K on a MacBook Air and it would still work. Um, just fine. So um, that is mind blowing, though, isn't it, Ben? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So um, again, for a video editor, you can edit really high quality videos using a base model Mac. Probably even you know in Windows land, an equivalent Windows laptop can do that. But then you might go online and you might see all these recommendations about, um, oh, you need like a minimum of two terabytes of internal storage. Oh, no, you need um, 32 gigs or 64 gigs of RAM. Oh, you need to use the M1 Max chip or whatever high-end Intel CPU you have to use. And you can, and it can become confusing because you can then convince yourself, oh, well, I'm, you know, thinking of that earlier mindset that you need the most that you can afford that you should be buying all this stuff where... <laughs> Now, there's almost a recommendation that you don't actually need to go all the way um, to, to satisfy whatever need you're needing to do in terms of the type of footage you're editing. Yeah, well, I mean, if you just, let, let's face it, video editing is on a PC is, is old. And, you know, for over 20 years now, we've been able to do it. And I think, you know, the, the modern edit tools that we have for video, even 8K, are pretty standard. So it's really just about whatever your machine can handle. And and my recommendation is if you want to know uh, what's the right machine for you today is take whatever machine you have, get some 8K or 4K, jam it into a video editor and see how it performs. And if it doesn't perform, maybe you need a little bit more of something. But wow, I mean, with this M1 that I'm using, yeah, and I use DaVinci, uh, put 4K through it, and i tell you what, it works faster than I think uh, some of the using Final Cut back in 2015 or 2016, you know, with just uh, high definition. So, I, I mean, this is how far these machines have come. But to think that a base model Mac does 8K, wow. Absolutely. And I guess the, um, uh, the like a, a good differentiator, and I think this is where I'll, I'll relate it to my use case, is that I just shoot iPhone footage. Um, so that's 4K60 in the H264. Keep it in the ecosystem, hey? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, uses the H264 um, codec or 265, the com but it's all compressed, etc. And basically the M1 Max handle that perfectly fine. Like I, I zip around in the timeline on Final Cut, no problems, no no lag, whatever. I don't, admittedly, if I, maybe if I was using multiple streams, like if I started adding, you know, four, five, six streams um, and I'm cutting between them, it might start to lag for instance but um you know for editing like this type of um podcast video for instance no problems at all um and uh that's why um the only thing that i've noticed is that there's probably a use case for getting like 16 gigs of ram when doing video editing um and that's largely got to do with the fact that um uh it will rely less on using swap memory off the um ssd for that which um you know going to our um m2 controversy video from uh, the other week um you know that was a big thing in the last couple of weeks but again it's not something that is a big issue because i'm editing off an external ssd now um that only has um i think 30 percent of the read write speed of the new m2 ssds i'm not seeing any slowdowns or um or anything like that um so again like if you're doing that you probably can get away with just a macbook air don't get confused by what people are saying online around oh you need um all this storage, all this RAM, etc. They do qualify it. I'll give them that. Um, but that's really if you're starting to use DSLR cameras with heavy-duty codecs and um, shooting 8K that chew up 10 gigs of drive space per minute, that sort of stuff. Of course, you're going to need um, more storage. But I would think that if you're 
aware of this and are savvy enough to know what you're doing and you know all of the information behind these codex you already know which one you're going to buy it's not really a question then well that's that's right and uh you know i, I think you make a great point about the ssds i, I think that um they're probably actually as as well as i guess the the m1 m2 chips but they've been a huge step forwards in terms of performance so you know, I, th I think things like RAM aren't as important as they were before. Uh, your storage is important because it needs to be instant read/write, which you get with an SSD. And and then at the other end of it, really, uh, you know, the chips are so good now at processing so fast that um, you're in a whole other dimension. And and as you say, work with what you've got. Go and use someone else's, you know, machine. Try it on theirs, and then you'll get a pretty clear picture of what you actually need. And and the thing that still has stunned me with this M1 is you don't really need much more at all. Mm, absolutely. Um, and I guess one last point: um, shouldn't actually forget that. Just remember the um, if you've got an iPhone or a high-end Android device right now. You can actually shoot in 4K in some cases on the Android phones, 8K, and you can actually edit them on your phones now. So um, that's uh, that's kind of the level that we're at, and um, uh, you you've got more choice to think about. You don't need to spend as much money as you think you do. Oh, totally. It's uh, still, as we say all the time, when it comes to this, whether it's your mobile device, whether it's your your laptop. The performance of these devices now is just stunning and what you can do on them because of it is, is incredible and we wouldn't even have dreamed it 10 years ago.